The skies in Kampala city have just opened up with rains. And this is what happens. Homes in these suburbs are flooded and roads are impassable. These are familiar scenes in this city. Locals here are left lamenting. The flooding is because of the plastics that clog the drainage systems. So if we can first of all find a clear way of throwing uh, these plastics away, which is in a way that it doesn't clog the, the, the drainage system, then we have uh, a, uh, the, the, the floods reducing. In Uganda, several human activities have led to the destruction of wetlands through activities like construction, farming, industrialization, and these are affecting the ecosystem and climate change. Technocrats at the Ministry of Water and Environment are worried. The current state of wetlands in Uganda is that uh, they have reduced from what used to be 13% of the total land surface area to now about 8.4%. Uh, percent of the total land surface area and we estimate that the country has lost close to between 40 and 50 percent of their wetlands uh, through this human intervention. This is eventually biting farmers in Uganda. Drought is taking a toll but with a spirit of hope these farmers far east of Uganda in Palisa district are beating the odds. Taka Dalson has for the past 40 years lived as a rice farmer in Limoto wetland but hasn't achieved much. We used to cultivate in wetland and it would stay dry. We didn't have any water, be it in rain season, and the rice would not yield. Since this project came here and people accepted to leave the wetland and they came to become participants here, so we have enough grass in the wetlands, we have enough fish and enough water, so our animals are not starving. Not great memories from the farmers, they are living testimonies. On these eight acres of land outside the Limoto wetland, they are ripping more than before. In these plots, they are growing cabbages, onions, carrots, tomatoes all through the year. Most impressively is the drip irrigation system here and there is no regret. I turn on the water very early and after that I clean the filter. Then start pumping water for the plants during the day like cabbages and onions. This is a great boost to the farmers and it operates with minimum efforts and their crops can survive the long dry seasons. Now the water in this reservoir is uh, pumped up using solar uh, system pumped up into the tanks that you can see up there and then it flows uh, by gravity and then it, it we use what we call a drip irrigation system drop by the drop and the yields are day by day what have benefited out of this project when we first harvested and got some money I managed to buy some animals at home and buy myself a smartphone. We have 15 plots. We initially harvested three bags of millet. We are earning only 300. This was throughout the year. But ever since this project came in, we are now getting 1.5. The Ministry of Water and Environment with different stakeholders is running such innovations and alternative livelihood programs to help in the restoration of wetlands so as to restore the biodiversity and initiatives like these in Limoto wetlands. <laughs> it is now a great scenery and the sights and sound are the true definitions of nature. How does this wetland function and other wetlands in Uganda? They have got an important role in regulating the flow of water. And they do it in two ways. During the wet season, they store the water using the vegetation, so the papyrus, the typha and other vegetation, and the soils help to store that water. Now during the dry season, that water is released slowly, one to replenish the surrounding areas, but also in helping to ensure that we keep these areas cool, 
which is very important in terms of crop production. As government and the different stakeholders like Infonile diverse means of restoring the wetlands and biodiversity, it is key to note how key government institutions like National Environment Authority and Wetland Management need to make several changes in the execution of policies.